Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our exploration of the sport continues. We go to the world of mixed martial arts for this very special edition of the Nike Hot Seat. Good friend of ours over the years, Gerard Trice, joins us. The news came out just three days ago that Bellator MMA was signing Gerard to a incredible contract and a great opportunity. He joins us from Arizona Combat. Gerard, congratulations. I appreciate it, Scott. An incredible recruiting class of recent prospects. You join Aaron Pico, Ed Ruth, Talro Fortune, plus guys that were there. That really led the way. Guys like Joe Warren, Darian Caldwell, Bubba Jenkins. But you, sir, are one of the big men that has had a tremendous career in the sport of wrestling. You find yourself in MMA. How did you get here? Well, honestly, man, this 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 probably took off in like 2011, man. Uh, my boy Sean Bunch, uh, after he qualified the weight class uh, for the Olympics in uh, 2012, I was actually training uh, down in Columbus, and uh, his guy, his uh, agent at the time was Mike Kogan, and those guys just kept joking around like, hey, man, you need to start fighting, man, you need to skip this wrestling world, come over, come over to the fighting game, you know, and I was like, I was like, ah, I think about it, man, you know, uh, right now I'm focused on making the, the next Olympic team, man, and uh, maybe afterwards, uh, I'll get into it, but it was mostly Sean Bunch, man, and then seeing guys like Daniel Cormier and and Mo Wall and all those guys, man, who who really like you know pay the way and Joe Warren, you know, and I like, you know, I just thought that I can have success in this sport as well. How long so, did it take for this to really boil down? I mean, Scott Coker is a very smart businessman. Bellator is one of the top fighting organizations in the entire world. You'll be seen when fighting on nearly 500 million homes worldwide in over 140 countries. As a matter of fact, on Spike TV, you're going to be able to, to, to market yourself in such a way where more people will know your name in one night than knew you in one year in the world of wrestling. Have, has that sunk in yet? Man, a little bit, man. You know, it just, it just makes me think, you know, about, you know, like NCAAs a little bit, you know, like, like, like just to see... Like, like all the fans, you know, like and the fans get to know me now, you know, and, and see what I have to bring to the table, you know. There are so, guys that have understood what you brought to the table, guys like Wayne Boyd and Andy Barth and the whole team at Tight Mercury Wrestling Club. We go back to Central Michigan and the head coach there. I mean, you've, you've well, the whole coaching staff really over the years. I remember cautioning you at uh, the Midlands Championship. I said, this is not a fight, Gerard. This is not a fight. This is this is wrestling. I don't I don't even remember who you were wrestling, but dude, it was about throwdown time. Do you remember this? Uh, it was probably man. Honestly, it was probably against Zach Ray, maybe in the, in, in the finals at the Millens, maybe it was I, probably him. I, I think you're right. I mean, uh, me and him had a little bit of history, man, dating back since like 2003, like eighth grade, you know. So it, it, it was it, it always gets a little physical with us two, you know. <laughs> but you know what? It was a harbinger of things to come. Sitting in the Nike hot seat today, Gerard Trice, uh, making his home right now in Arizona combat, uh, getting ready for what the world of Bellator has to offer him. Minute to minute, of course, we're going to keep you up to date on what Gerard's future looks like, when he will make a debut. Uh, it's it's an outstanding opportunity for wrestling again to, to be seen on the uh, national and international stage through Bellator's fight cards. Let's talk a bit about um, uh, your most recent international competition. It's been uh, a life for you at 27 years old. Did you see yourself jumping to MMA before this, or are you perfectly timed? Uh, honestly, man, like my, you know, the the ultimate goal was making a, an Olympic team and, and and winning an Olympic medal. Uh, that, that that was the ultimate goal, you know. But you know, things don't work out as a uh, as planned, you know. So like, uh, MMA was the, the next step for me in, in my mind, you know. Uh, like like. I just believe that like, I can come into the sport and, and make an impact immediately, you know. Uh, my work ethic's pretty hard for it, you know, and, and, and I have what it takes. With all the signings of the names that we've listed, that we've mentioned, is Bellator actively recruiting elite-level wrestlers to transition to the world of mixed martial arts? Uh, most definitely, man, because, you know, they, you know, the most dangerous guy in MMA right now is, is, is a wrestler with good hands. Mm. You know, because just just for the simple fact is, uh, if you can't stop my hands, you know, you, you, the next thing you're gonna do is probably try to take me down. Right. And ten times out of ten, that's that's not gonna happen. You know, so 
they, they're, they're recruiting guys who have an elite background of wrestling. Uh, but, but the thing is about, but about us wrestlers, uh, we have to be exciting, man, in, in this fight world. Like, we can't just go down and, t and take guys down and just lay on them. And, uh, and get, not, and not get, side, get side mount on him like Ben Ben Asker might do that, and <laughs> and it's not real exciting. I mean, he wins fights. He so you wins, can't deny his wins, record, so right? It's just, not, it's just not exciting, you know. Right. But but the thing is, like you know, Ben 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 Asker said it a few years ago. You know, he he he's not he's not in the game to hurt people. You know, uh, he, he'll take you down and, and and punch you in the face until the ref stops it. But you know. <laughs> Hey man, whatever floats his boat, man. Right. If that that he hasn't he hasn't lost in the game yet, you know. So he's doing something right. It's just not exciting with knockouts and chokeouts. I would like to see Ben choke more people. I know he can do it because he has a pretty good uh, jujitsu background. So super strong too, super strong. <laughs> I know, right? What's your what's your background like in in training mixed martial arts? Have you helped prepare other fighters in the past? I have, man. Uh, I actually worked with uh, Clifford Starks and. Um, Matt Frankel, they both fight in WSOF on NBC. Uh, Cliff had a title fight uh, three weeks ago, and Matt had a, uh, he was on that card as well. Uh, they both didn't do too well, but uh, Matt Frankel is an up-and-coming star. He's only 22 years old, and he's pretty good. And Cliff, you, uh, Cliff wrestled at Arizona State. You know, he's an older guy. Uh, he, fought, he fought in the UFC at one point, so... Uh, Train with the, I train with those guys every day, so uh, training is going really good with those two guys. I was talking um, this morning with a former UFC heavyweight champ, and uh, uh, Shane Shane is jumping into the world of management. Shane Carwin, and he believes that f uh, wrestlers and fighters need great management in order to be able to last out their career. And and for some, it's a pretty short window. Couture, perhaps uh, Tito Ortiz, perhaps approved out you know, an extended career, but that's not necessarily the norm. Uh, so you've got a plan, as you have in your wrestling career, I would imagine, you have to plan for an extended career based on your ability and where you're going to grow. So that leads me to the next question. As much as you're finding a home right now at AZ Combat, and by the way, thanks to Jemerson and, and Trevor and everybody at AZ Combat, have you decided on a training camp or where you will train? Uh, not, not at this quiet moment, but, uh, as of now, it's right now here in AZ combat right now, you AZ, know, okay. And that, yeah. and I tell you what, great home, nice place. Uh, yeah, it's pretty nice here, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I train there. So that, uh, my, my producer, Brad Johnson says, but can Gerard take a punch? Uh, well, I asked you that off air. I said, can you take a punch? <laughs> and what of was course. your response? Do you remember? Yeah, of course I can take a punch, man. <laughs> and I said, can you take a punch from me? And you said, as long as you're willing to take one back. And obviously, well, that's where the story changes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's great fighters that um, they don't get into a fight to get hit. They get into a fight to win. Right. And to stay away from the other guy's fist, to stay away from the other guy's shots. To hit and not get hit. Exactly. Um, exactly. There are guys, and let's face it, you're, you're, not, you're not a lightweight, but you've done an amazing job of transforming your physique over the last two, three years. Uh, I go back to Central Michigan, and, and on your singlet it said uh, a Doughboy. So I don't know if we live and buy that. There's a lot of love for that, uh, for all that it represented during those years. But do we maintain the, uh, the legend that is the Doughboy, or do we look for a new, a new yeah. moniker for you? You know, man, I, I honestly was talking to uh, one of my coaches yesterday, man, one of my high school coaches, you know, and he was like, uh, yo, man, you, you, can't, you can't abandon that name, man, because that, that's the name you made for yourself, man, uh, in your whole career of wrestling. You know, when, when people mention Gerard Trice, uh, they think of Doughboy, you know. Yeah. Uh, the first time I wore that singular was uh, in 2000, 2006, uh, one of my first state title. We all had custom singlets uh, at Highland Park High School in Michigan, and uh Mine's had the Doughboy on it, and then I ended up going to Senior Nationals the next year and uh, pinning my way through, you know, and I wore the Doughboy singlet then and there. And that, that, that made waves at, uh, what was that, Win Magazine, and then um, the next time I got the word was during my Olympic red shirt in 2012, and I wore it at the Midland Finals where, where I, when I beat up on, uh, <laughs> his name? Uh, Zachary. From Iowa. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Um 
yeah, the name is escaping me. Right this minute. I'm sorry, but it's yeah, you're right. So it goes back to 2006. So there is a legend behind it. Um, you're you you bring with you an outstanding pedigree. Uh, it's not just an impressive trophy case. It's everything it took to get the trophies in the case. Three time University Nationals champ, uh, won both styles, which is just an outstanding statement on your ability. You won both styles in 2010. You added a Greco Roman title in 2015. Outstanding wrestler award as well. Success at 120, and then dropping down to uh, 98 kilos at 216. An impressive 50 pound weight loss transformation how have you done it um it was uh really this is what really happened man with that with that man so about a year ago uh we were in uh we were in zagreb croatia and uh i started losing a lot of weight Uh, i went from the first week i think i lost 17 pounds in the first week man and uh just kept losing weight, you know, and I was already an undersized heavyweight, you know, especially international. And the thing was, uh, uh, JJ, James Johnson, and uh, Matt Linlin and Momir all said that I needed to go down to 98 two weeks later when we were in, uh, in Hungary. We were in Budapest. No, we were in Tata Banya in Hungary. And they were like, we think you should go 98 for the, for the world team this year. We think you'll have a lot of success at 98 kilograms. So right then and there, that, that week in February, the end of February, I start dieting and doing extra cardio to get my weight down. And uh, a lot of that was uh, a lot of a lot of that dieting came from JJ. Man, uh, he actually helped me out a lot with maintaining my weight and putting me on a diet plan on the things I needed to do to get my weight down. So uh, overall, it was a great decision for me, man, health wise. In my body, and I, and, I, and, I, and I move a lot faster now, man, even though I was already <laughs> yeah. fast. You know? so, so you had speed, agility, the model good looks. That is your odd trice. You know? uh, and, I mean, you're, you're, all, you're as complete a package prior to making an MMA debut as you can be, and people aren't familiar with your name yet. What do you want to tell them? I mean, I just want to tell you guys, man, just uh, be prepared for me, man, by the end of this year. Uh, I come in. I, I plan on coming in and making a huge splash. Uh, like I'm not gonna. I don't want to be overconfident or over or, or being cocky about it. But like I, I plan. I plan on to come in and, and make people catch these hands. And that's that's the route I'm going, man. You mentioned some guys that we have a ton of respect for: Matt Lindlin, Momir Petkovic, and you didn't mention Kevin Jackson. You didn't mention. Oh, uh, man. Come I know. On, I'm man. just I'm just throwing it out there because. I have so much respect for Kevin's okay. pedigree as well, and I'm talking about in the world of mixed martial arts. And prior to that, of course, of course Olympic gold. What kind of a, a mentor is Kevin Jackson to you? Man, okay, man. So my time at Iowa State was uh, it was it was pretty good, man. I, I, KJ, I grew up watching KJ, man. He's a Michigan guy. Like every every like you know every inner city kid, man, that sees uh, Kevin Jackson, man, they know like yo. That's who we want to be like, world champion, Olympic champion, you know. And he, he had a couple fights in uh, in the UFC back in the day, man. Uh, K- KJ was a was a huge mentor to me the, the whole time being there, man. Uh, especially about mental toughness, uh, not let, not backing down from guys, always making them feel pressure and everything else, man. K- K- KJ is a a great role model to me as well, man. You know. Is it fair to say KJ is the man? Man, KJ is the man. Is the man. He's all in. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I look at guys like KJ, Tom Erickson, the big cat, um, guys that has you know put their time in in wrestling and then into the world of mixed martial arts. Kevin Randleman, uh, Randy Couture, uh, Matt Lindlin, guys that all came from the world of wrestling that are relative to you in size. You're coming in in the light heavyweight division. It's impressive already, but the, the addition of you, dude. I don't even know. You know, this is going to be main event stuff quick. I mean, that's the plan, man. That's the plan. Mm. And you mentioned Sean Bunch. Uh, talk about an inspirational guy to train with. He has so much heart, doesn't he? Oh, man, he does, man. Like, you, you got to realize, man, 2012, man, they, they called upon him twice to go qualify the, the, the Olympic weight, you know? It's just sad that he didn't represent the country at that weight that he qualified, but, you know, those are the rules. You know, those that's how things go down. But, man, Sean, Sean Bunch is a 
a great friend of mine, man. Ever since I stepped on a senior senior level in wrestling, that I was under his wing pretty much, man. Uh, Sean Bunch, Angel Escobedo, those guys, man. Like that's who I stayed with when uh, I went down to Columbus to train for about a month. So, I I was doing uh, the Global Wrestling News TV show, and there was a segment uh, where I was interviewing Wayne Boyd, Wayne Eric Boyd, Web Productions, and he said, uh, "Hang on," he says, "I've got a message here." from Gerard Trice, I want to read it. And he went to his cell phone and he read the message that you <laughs> sent to him and the people at Titan Mercury Wrestling Club in San Marino, California. And what you said did not have to be said. A lot of guys would have walked away and wouldn't have said anything. But you, from your heart, thanked these people that believed in you. And it only solidified my knowledge of you and my belief in you as a person aside from you as an athlete because i think that's rather myopic in view the the better picture is you as a person and i can't wait to see your continued success within the world of mixed martial arts i'm so glad to have had you in the nike hot seat today to be able to feature you on takedown and takedownwrestle.com it's uh it's really neat you're out to be able to help tell the story I'm, by the way, Danny Brenner, uh, Bellator MMA PR, and, and, and Scotty Coker, and all the guys at Bellator, they couldn't have picked a better guy. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> he is the man, the myth, the legend, Gerard Trice, and he's making his home right now at Arizona Combat, AZ Combat. I want to thank Trevor. I want to thank Jemerson White, uh, all the guys that helped to make this happen today, but it's been absolutely – whose computer are you on today? Uh, is he standing there? Is he with an earshot? He's he's actually he actually is. He's right there. there t tell us tell us his name before we uh, let you go. His I know I know you may not know it. You're a new guy, so tell ask him if he can shout out his name for me. Hey, yo, give give it give a shout out to your name. Tell him once in a while I'd like to ask Tim who's the Greek <laughs> Scott. All you got to do is ask Tim who the Greek guy was that blocked for him at Vanier. <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I, I want my people that are watching this, the viewers of the Nike Hot Seat today, I want them to hear oh, from your mouth this. your name. No, <laughs> so don't, your name, don't, don't drag me into this stuff. <laughs> You're already on TV now. Oh well, yeah, I'll just leave a spotlight to this gentleman. <laughs> okay, hey dude, thank you very much. We appreciate it, and uh, we will be giving lots of love to AZ Combat as well, and everybody that trains there. Gerard, thanks, man. I'm looking forward to the next step. It's going to be fun. Most definitely, man. Uh, Hey, man, another thing, man, you guys can follow me on, on Twitter if you can, man. My name is I am underscore dough, D-O-U-G-H. I am dough. I am an underscore in there. I forgot the underscore. I am underscore dough, D-O-U-G-H. I am. <clears throat> I am. Except Fred. Nice <laughs> to see you, Gerard. Thanks for the time today. God bless, and uh, we appreciate everything that Bellator is doing for our young athletes out there. And at 27 years old, man, you are an absolute star, not in the making, but in the proving. <laughs> I can't wait to see what's next. I can't either, man. Gerard Trice has been our very special guest on the Nike Hot Seat today for all of us at Takedown Media. I'm Scott Casper thanking you for watching.